Enlightenment appears to be avoiding me. How do you know? What knows? What knows that what is avoiding and that what is being avoided and that what appears to be the avoider? The extremities of enlightenment, extremities, meaning from zero to out of body ultimate extremity, are unique to the individual. We have Christ, whose enlightened state not disregarding the relationship between God. Please, if you're religious, don't make comments because it's about the state of the human or the being that arise, arrived in this planet. What, when Christ went into the forest for 40 days and 40 nights was the extremity of his reconnection with his father. What is your extremity in the car crash that you had in comparison to your friend's car crash, which appear to be similar? This is all experience, you see. Even enlightenment is an experience. Even the idea of you not being this person has to appear through an experience or has to be revealed through an experience. All is experience. The truth is not anything that experiences. Meaning, if you know the truth, you don't know the truth. Because the truth in your mind-based world has to be revealed through an experience of me meeting the truth, understanding the truth, discovering the truth, recognizing the truth, whatever. Truth is beyond this human state, this human mind. Truth is yourself. Experiencing enlightenment, experiencing road accidents, experiencing everything that has a, a scale or a measuring platform to identify that Oh God, oh God, oh my God. I know what the speaker is speaking about. I didn't go through the same extreme enlightened state as Yuji Krishnamurti or Eckhart Tolle or the speaker. I went through a very simple transcending change that made me feel as if I was gone. I was gone and I appeared or I reappeared as this newborn soul. But I don't have the ammunition, I don't have the artillery to say, this happened to me. I just want to let it pass. The extremities of enlightenment are passing. As is your appearing body passing, as is your story passing, as is that what appears to be changing, passing, transcending. How can one speaker speak about their experience with a different quality of mind and a different source? of what I am that can replicate the experience to you exactly as it is for you. I'll give you a, an example. UG Krishnamurti was an enlightened being. Well, let's not call it a guru because his Guards want to continue with his 
belief systems. Yuji Krishnamurti appeared as if he was shocked out of this world of form, questions, answers, systems and everything. And through his fortune of having some cash, didn't have to do or didn't have to follow the system that most human beings have to follow. Yuji Krishnamurti says his enlightenment led to a realization that everything is biological. You only arrive here, you don't know why you arrive here, who you are, you just appear here, you appear in this body, you go through life, you follow the system and then you die and you're fed to the worms. And who can argue against that? What can argue against that? But what I know about my own enlightenment, very similar to UG Krishnamurti, very, very similar, very similar. 100% agreement with everything he says. This man, this mind says. But I look upon that beginning, birth and end, death, and say, so what? If this is all it is, biologically, if I am simply a biological flesh and bones and blood, one visit person appearing here in a systematic world that is being controlled by society, biologically, I love biology. I love the idea that I don't have to worry about the afterlife. I don't have to worry about where I came from. I don't have to worry about God and Brahman and absolute and enlightened spirits and angels. I don't have to worry about them. So what am I going to be interested in? UG Krishnamurti did not speak eloquently about the beauty of nature, the eloquence of being surrounded by this incredible biological appearing states of nature. You rather, he said, you're being fooled. No, he is being fooled. When I speak about consciousness, when I speak about the one moment, when I speak about God, when I speak about all these things, I'm being fooled into the truth that I am the truth, fooling myself with so many opportunities, so many possibilities, so many options, so many ways of understanding each and every speaker, each and every Fast saint and guru. And within myself, this sad guru also says its own story. <laughs> Enlightenment, like life, is extreme. Like pain can be extreme. Like joy can be extreme. But it will pass. I managed to overcome through a continual connectedness with consciousness to realize that there, even though this biological idea that UG lays on myself and others that there is no beginning and no end. There is a system, there is society, there is, is ego, there are um, very corrupt minds and very kind and compassionate minds. 
that exists. But whatever you experience from enlightenment and its overall state and its beautiful, all-encompassing whole oneness state, you must explore that what really means something emotionally connects with you. If it is the warm on the ground and this biological way of just walking and it just grabs your attention and grabs your heart, grabs your whole soul, then, so, wow, you have encountered something worthwhile whilst in this body. If it's that, I'm not going to give it a name, that yellow disc in the sky that gives you light, heat, sun, warmth, color, radiance, glimmering, reflection. And it's part of the whatever it is that surrounds this yellow disc and whatever it shines on and its wholeness. If it's not just a worm, which is a reflection of the whole of universe living, a warm living, we have gradations of what we really need to actually connect with this world of ourselves. The worm squirms up the grassy leaf. The sun, it's living. The worm is living. It is actually moving. There is a, connect in, a connection between you, that living thing, whatever you are, not about you, and understanding, wow, look at that worm. Look at what is taking place. What is the difference between looking at that poem and looking at the whole of this peripheral vision of wonderful beauty and shape and color and movement? What is the difference? What is the difference to looking at God and its extreme state, its profoundly beautiful state that you are not separate from? Everything is living. Yuji Krishnamurti probably was a wonderful man who walked around looking at things and which made him genuinely feel good to be alive. What else do we need? What genuinely makes you good about being alive? What do you know without words and identities and needs and desires and pointings and and all that stuff to make you just smile. What is it that makes you feel? <laughs> I am complete with no beginning and no end. 